I'm Fiona Torrance and today I'll probably wear two hats. Um, the first being that I'm still a PhD student at LJMU and I'm awaiting my viva. Um, and the second is I'm a quality officer and facilitator moving on with life and learning. The position I got as a direct result of my research. Um, so I'm going to start by just giving you a general overview. If anybody's interested in the abstract, there's a copy over there. Um, basically, I uh, started doing a master's degree at LJMU in um, ethnography, how people with learning and sensory disabilities um, influence technology in recruitment settings. So I did 12 months primary um, research, field research at Remploy. Um, I was employed full time and did my master's full time while doing that. Um, Following that, um, because of my findings, uh, I was basically looking at the DWP route, which people with disabilities come through the recruitment into employment um, route. Um, I decided to do um, continue with PhD ethnography, but I had to choose my stream of ethnography um, in how people with learning and sensory disabilities influence technology in employment or workplaces um, and for that I did about 15 months field research with Northwest Community Services supported employment which is the social services route into voluntary work or placements or employment um, and also did worked on funded projects where my research would be used to apply for funding and then when we got the funding with the organisation is to run the project. So one of the first was Wicked Fish, who did a project called People Like Us. And they had an exhibition at um, the Museum of Liverpool. That um, um, the, 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 the role I did there and the way I did my research was through um, technology training and adaptive enabling technology, as well as mainstream. So we experimented a bit. Um, following that, I joined, did funding applications of Moving On With Life and Learning, and we've run a number of projects since then. The main um, focus of my research being critical ethnography was that it had a political slant to look at how structurally is the Equalities Act, Access to Work, and even the Current Care Act of 2014, how that is implemented on a ground level within um, supported and employment services and uh, employment support services for people with disabilities. And basically, the, what you find is that there's, there's very little support technology-wise for outside of the education setting for people who are looking for work, who have disabilities, uh, particularly people with learning disabilities, um, and also um, the Equalities Act does not um, compel um, employment support providers to make technology provision. So what that means is in Liverpool there's approximately two main and then four supported employment providers. They do not provide adaptive or enabling technology for people with disabilities and learning disabilities in their service at all. Most of them don't even have Wi-Fi. So there's, a, there's quite a digital exclusion problem. So that's what I was looking at. And that's what I do at MOL and what we try and address. So my next slide, which is what I should have probably done in the beginning, is an overview. I've covered this overview. It's introducing MOL and then some of the projects they run and then how my research has been used for digital inclusion in Liverpool. So Moving On With Life and Learning is basically an organisation with the purpose of challenging injustice through people potential. So it's the belief that everybody, regardless of disability background, has the potential to develop. Um, and seeing the value in that. Um, MOL run various campaigns for hate crime, um, disability awareness with, through the Crown Prosecution Service, Probation Services, um, that go into schools. Um, Terry's been part of that as well. Um, we do other things like activities, health and wellbeing activities, so it's projects um, that will develop people with disabilities. 
one of the projects we do, and, um, and that's how we, we're addressing these disability inequalities, is through these projects and creating awareness. But one of the projects we do is the digital inclusion. And we started off, it was 2014, um, doing Keys for Skills, which was 15 people that were part of my research participants um, who had learning disabilities ranging from autism, Asperger's cerebral palsy, to Down syndrome, um, just a wide variety, um, and introducing them to um, the use of tablets and synaptic software. Um, what we then did was develop certain people within that cohort to go on and be what we call digital champions and train others, peer support. One of the main successes, or two of the main successes out of that particular training, just let me know if I'm going over time, was um, a woman who for 12 years, she used to be a English professor or English teacher, even taught in Italy, very um, you know, confident person, and she'd had um, a stroke, which left her um, par paralyzed and with speech aphasia. Through doing the voice recognition and use of these Samsung tablets with the synaptic, she purchased her own um, Samsung phone. She now, I mean, she communicates with people in Italy. She goes on trips to Italy. Um, it's opened up a whole world, the fact that she can use this technology that's easy to use because she's it's affected her visual field as well. So the, the software is very um, accessible. Um, to use. I haven't got a demonstration today, but you could always email me if you'd like to know more, or at Synaptic um, Software, and it's online. You'd be able to find it. Um, this individual here is part of our current training. We've just finished at Rotunda College, where Synaptic didn't suit him. And his staff actually brought him in saying, we've got this problem. We've, we've got this gentleman who's 28 years of age. He um, is nonverbal, um, cerebral palsy. And the staff, he's, he's come up with his own version of Danaton. But the staff keep changing his turn of the staff. And he can't express his choices. He's getting frustrated because staff can't communicate with him. Is there a technology we can use? So what we did was... Um, research an app for him, found one, but you have to develop it yourself put in a person centered way according to the needs of the individual. So basically, it's called Jab Talk, and we based, we are now trying to develop an app that's a bit more advanced than that. But he's now been able to customize this app fully to his needs. Staff came in um, sort of rotations and trained in it. He can make his own food choices. He doesn't have to have what someone else in the house has. Um, because there's sound to it, he's actually starting to verbalize words he repetitively hears. So it's enabled him to communicate better with his staff, make more choices. Um, and he's going to be volunteering with us on our next training course. And also, we, fingers crossed, get the link for that, but we'll be going into um, special schools to work with young people and that will be, it's actually a school he used to go to as a youngster so he will be training them in what he's doing and also um, trying to help them out at any challenges they face in using social media and the vulnerabilities they may have with that. So that's sort of in a nutshell a um, bit about my research and what I'm doing now. I'm going to hand over to Terry will tell you a bit about the work that he does at Moore. And by the way, my, my name is Terry Cully. When I was a kid, I had a lot of illness. I went and I was all over the way. All, all, all the way we went to take home. But I met a lot of my education. I, 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 when I went to school, I found out the teacher ignored me. They didn't they, 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 they didn't compensate on all the brainy women in the front and all the people what we thought are reading and writing. Then we got showed up at, at the back of the queue, at the back of the, the classroom. They teach him, they compensate on all the ones who were clever. I left, I left there when I was 11. And I went to the queue. I don't want to wear better, better education, that's a crap. Um, 
Um, I have to teach you. I want to learn to be a mate. That way, that way I talk to the wall. He, he, I don't mind, but, but daddy got in front of me. At the age of 15, I got told I never have a job and I've been independent. I can't even go right. And that not the top man of me. But I draw a moon. And when I draw a moon, I turn nowhere. A new leaf. I had to do things what I got told I could never achieve. I met a lady called Ali. And one thing she did with me, she listened to me. People in power are in my life, my own family. She asked me two questions, what do you want to do? I said, Ali, I want to be fully independent. And she said to me, I will show you, but that's up to you. You get me back that and you don't matter. Now that I'm now that I'm fully independent, I've been fully independent now for twelve years. I do all my own cooking. And that I do all my own shopping. I'm inside my life. Thirteen years ago, I did my own group pay up to ten things together. Why, why do you do in a PRB? I put people on Wednesday and on Thursday. I tried to give them something why they didn't have you know, love my own life, basically. I tried to make people independent. I tell up and down the pool. I told the mother and father that don't look to the evil. Cheat, don't, cheat. If you are, if you are, don't call John. You take them by a name, or if you are a lady called, do don't ever look at the label, treat them like a normal human being. And then, and then to them, I found out when you're a label, I went to the old battle need. Oh my God, your family kind of have kind of you up in cotton wool. And you don't do that. Give them the chance to bleed and live a normal life. I know that that I'm mad, but. Get them my bit of pain in line. Let me know and you'll find out. And that I believe in I believe in one thing. With with like the poor guy there, you can't do anything in life. And after I've been doing that job, being a PR, I made eight people fully independent. Would you tell us about the work you do with the teaching time? Um the teaching that of it. I teach the next generation. I teach Dr. Waker, Dr. Nathan, Freddie O'Terry. And um, I go around the country. I've been to Manchester, Leeds, London. And all, all, eight years ago, I went to New York with Addy. And I teach 55 Dr. Waker. And we had a two weeks to plan for it. What I've been in, but we don't it. But I think I think you now we're all on a living tip. I used to be the co chair of the Pentagon. I used to be with Roy Gladden and nothing. And my job, if I didn't anything going on about them, you were getting treated bad. I thought that question why are they getting treated bad? The people, the people in that fight. He's asked me to remind him. <laughs> there are people in that fight. People in data are oh, they getting a bank for money. And um, I had to turn a meeting, being a coach here, I was part of it. Then I met that lady there, didn't I? And I, I met that lady, she, she had been ready to work with. But my role, with, all I want to do is have an disability. I know what I do, it's just like crap. And I'm trying to make sure that people be happy with what they are doing. If I did the one getting too bad, I go talk to their mother and father and they come and try to help them. And now, now I want a petition. I would say at the end of the petition, you don't put a label on any bean, you only put a label on food. Thanks. Tell them what they didn't tell them. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. 
Um, basically, what I've been doing with Mole is, well, I've only been here just under two weeks now, and as an apprentice, they've sort of put me in every sort of pond I can dip my toe in, really, just to give me an idea of what to do. Um, and as Fiona's already said about the projects that they need, the enabling technology, um, the teaching of the literacy, giving independence to people, it's really restored my faith in humanity. <laughs> it really, really has. Um, coming from a bit of a bad background myself, I've always sort of seeing the disadvantages that people have had when they don't have the same things that other people do and what my will do is basically just give them that equality back and give them the confidence within themselves to just do what they want with themselves and I've learned a lot from the people there and the level of inclu inclusion and just the level of fun and banter and the relationships that everyone has it's one of the best places you can work for in the city and I've already been there two weeks so <laughs> <laughs> see where I am in the next couple of years eh? <laughs> Uh, this is in the contact details. Point I was going to just make is um, it's interesting to think about why people choose to do disability studies, why do you choose to do the topic of research you do. So, I have got um, an overactive mirror neuron system in the brain, which is, depending on the school of thought, either on the autistic spectrum spectrum, higher functioning or not, because of the link with empathy, auto empathy. Um, and part of my reason for choosing to do this research was because I thought if I'm facing certain challenges, what must it be like for someone far more challenged than myself? If anybody wishes to get in touch, there's the contact details if you've got any questions, and thank you all very much.